Big blow, three run homer by George Hendrick. No runs, five hits, no errors for the Mets. Hop fly to right center field. Howard and Mookie Wilson are together, and Howard makes the call. One away. Three times they've gotten her on fly balls. Ray Searage, who came over from the St. Louis Cardinals system for catcher Jody Davis, who now plays for the Cubs. And here's Gary Tebbleton, who reached on a bunt and walked in the third. Fastball is looped to right near the line. Howard with a chase. He won't get it. And it gets by Hainhill. Templeton will reach second easily. Two base hit for Gary Templeton. That's his second double of the series. So one out, a man on second. Here's Keith Hernandez coming to the plate. All right, here it's a little bloop. Flair out in the right field. Howard gets too close to it. Tries to stop. Falls down. Ball going by, and Doug Flynn has to retrieve it. And it holds Templeton to a two base hit. First hit off Searage. Hernandez, one for one with a walk. Hit a hotline drive to right his last time up. Best ball in the outside corner, strike one. One out on the fourth inning. 5 nothing St. Louis trying to salvage this three game series. Mets winning the first two, 8 1 and 6 to 2. Foul tipped it at the plate. 0 oh 2 to Hernandez. Keith with two hits in this series. In nine at bats. And he's hitting 3 0 2. One ball, two strikes. Gary Tableton, he looped a double down the right field line. He's at second with one down. Low and away. Evens the count, two and two. Sears want to know his one win was the second day of the second season at Wrigley Field in Chicago. A topper to the mound is only play at first as Templeton goes down to third on the play makes it two out. This buds for the Mets. Win or lose, you sure give everybody a lot of thrills. Here's to you, the king of beers. George Henrik, two for two, with a three-run homer to left field, his 17th in the third inning off Pat Zachary. High, 1 and 0. Oh. Templeton at third with two out. Got the knees. One ball, one strike. Cardinals will be in Chicago after this series. The Mets have the Pirates in for two. Almost chased a high outside pitch and it's two and one. Templeton at third. Searage really throwing hard. <coughs> Haven't seen too many fourth balls, which is one of his specialties. Wrapped on the ground to Flynn. And he whips it over to Kingman to retire the side. So he gets the dangerous George Hendrick. No runs ahead, a man left at third, and the score in the middle of the four. It's the Cardinals five of the Mets nothing. And coming up for the Mets, Lee Mazzilli, John Stearns, and Doug Flynn. Now here's a word from Budweiser.
Hello, I'm Tom Dunn. And I'm Sarah Lee Kessler. Now we're covering more of your world with New York's only hour-long midday report. We have headline news and features. Ken Pruitt with the business report. Film and theater critic Judith Chris. Marianne Pedersen on family activity. And family medical guidance from Dr. Lendon Smith. Consumer update, shopping tips and visits to interesting restaurants. News at noon, now a full hour on Channel 9. Bottom of the fourth. A count of one strike to Lee Mazzilli, who hit a line drive single to center his first time up. 0 oh 2 now. You know, Steve, you're talking about throwing hard. I think one of the most exaggerated expressions is that a pitcher is throwing over 90 miles an hour. Very few pitchers do. In fact, about 18 of them have been clocked over 90 miles an hour in the history of baseball. And you'll hear that expression used an awful lot. He's throwing 90 miles an hour. But when you look at a fellow like Bob Turley, who was an outstanding thrower, he was clocked in 1960 at 90.7 miles an hour. Now, none of these fellows out here are throwing anywhere near that. Ryan Dern, who is considered a hard throwing fastball pitcher, 1960 was clocked at 91.1 miles an hour. 2 2 pitch. Hit hard, but right at her on a hop. He's got all kinds of time, and there's one away. Who's the fastest pitcher you ever faced? I would put Rex Barney in it as the hardest throwing pitcher, pitched for the Brooklyn Dodgers, but he was never clocked. Nolan Ryan was clocked at the highest rate. In 1974, they clocked Nolan Ryan at 100.8 miles an hour. Second to him, J.R. Richard was clocked in 1978 at 100 even miles an hour. Walter Johnson was clocked back in 1914. Base hit for John Sturz. He's two for two. Roof gets it back in. I didn't know they had clocking devices in 1914, but Walter Johnson, and they always say he was the hardest throwing pitcher ever, was clocked at 99.7 miles an hour. One out, one on. Here's Doug Flynn with the Mets down 5 nothing. One out in the fourth. Bob Feller was clocked at 98.6. Rick, Rich Gossage clocked in 1980 at 99.4. Feller had a normal temperature for a pitch. He made an awful lot of hitters sick. Thermometer went up. But Feller was really a great curveball pitcher and that's what the big difference is if you got a great curve and control very hard then you've got it going. Stearns leads with one man out. Missing outside to Flynn 2 and 0. Oh. Sandy Koufax was clocked in 1960 at 93.2 miles an hour. He also had a great curveball. So an old film once before they were able to clock it with the jugs gun. Here's a fly ball to the right field. It's carrying. Dane Orge flags it down at the warning track. And Sturge has to go back. There are two away. Started to say before they had all the newfound devices to clock the speed of a fastball. Saw an old film where they clocked the Bob Feller pitch by racing his pitch against a man on a motorcycle. And it was close. Ron Gardenhire with the infield hit beat it out on the ground ball to Templeton in the second inning. Loaded the bases. But the Mets couldn't score as Pat Zachary rounded out to second to end it. Many of the fans feeling that Zachary should have been lifted for a pinch hitter. Two and oh to Garden Hire. Stearns at first, he's single, he's two for two. Here's a strike from Sorensen, two and one. Larry Sorensen over from the Milwaukee Brewers in the big trade that saw the Brewers get Ted Simmons, Raleigh Fingers, and Pete Vukovic. Cardinals got Lescano, David Green, and Sorensen. Two and two now. Oh, 
Did he go after it? The first base umpire on the appeal says no. Jim Quick. Full count. And Stearns will be running with the pitch. Let's have Mike Cubbage in the on deck circle. So if Stearns gets on, Cubbage will pinch it for the pitcher, and they have Mike Marshall throwing in the bullpen. So a lot of action if Garden Hire can get going. Line drive to left center, a base hit. Stearns is going to third as the throw comes into second. And it's first and third on the hit and run, or on the play where Stearns was running. So the count was three and two. The runner going and it paid off. Gardenhauer gets his second hit of the ball game, and the Mets again threaten. Stearns in the third, and Gardenhauer at first base. And a conference at the mound is Hub Kettle, the pitching coach who has been in professional baseball six decades, comes out to the mound. You know, talking about hard throwers, a lot of people say that a pitcher named Steve Dalkowski. Was the hardest throwing pitcher ever. He never made it to the major leagues. Once pitched a one hit game, which he struck out 21 batters in nine innings, and he lost nine to eight. He once pitched a no hitter, in which he struck out 18 batters, walked 18, and lost eight to four. Never pitched an inning in the major leagues. In 995 innings in the minors, he struck out 1,396 batters and walked 1,354. Man who just came out to talk to Sorensen never pitched an inning in the major leagues. Hub Kittle, but as you point out, six decades. Well, the Mets are threatening again with Mike Marshall getting ready as another Mike, Mike Cubbage steps up. Garden Hire is now two for two. Mike Cubbage batting 241 overall, but having great success as a pinch hitter. Pinch hitting right here for Ray Searich. Five nothing Cardinals, two out of the fourth, and the Mets just trying to break through here. And this could do it, but a great catch by Templeton robs the Mets of a run. Gary Templeton leaping high into the air and makes a dandy catch. So no runs again. The Mets threaten and leave two on two hits. Well hit ball by Covets trying to go the opposite way. So no runs, two hits, two left, and the score after four, it's the Cardinals five and the Mets nothing. Coming up for St. Louis, Darrell Porter, Dane Orge, and Ken Obergfell. And now here's a word from Manufacturers Hanover. Mike Marshall is the new pitcher for the Mets as we get ready for the fifth inning. Cardinals lead at five nothing. Marshall with a record of three and two throws the screwball. And he is appearing in his 15th game, has a 3.15 earned run average. He's had his ups and downs since coming over to the Mets, coming out of uh, retirement at the age of 38. Last pitch for Minnesota last year. So Ray Searage went to two innings, gave up no runs, one hit, walked two, and struck out one. Darrell Porter takes a ball. Searich doing a fine job in relief has not allowed a run in his last six appearances now ten in the third innings allowing just a total of three hits Porter 0 for 1 with a walk golfs it down the line and it's in toward the corner it's a foul ball as Howard takes a slide across the foul line it's the only way he could stop himself without crashing into that wall out there He's going full speed right here, and if he doesn't go down on the ground, he's going to crash into the wall. He took a little uh, look out of the corner of his eye how close he was to that fence and made a good move. Porter really hanging into that high screwball. One and two now to Darrell Porter. Look out. Looked like it was going to hit him, and then it tailed away. And another hanging screwball. 
Marshall gave up that two run homer to pinch hitter uh, Julio Gonzalez in the 13th inning at St. Louis last weekend. Give the Cardinals the 4 to 2 win. Two and two to Porter. Full count now. 29 year old Darrell Porter. His top year was 79 when he hit 291 under Whitey Herzog at Kansas City. There's a bouncer right side of the infield. Good backhand by Kingman and Marshall cover. Kingman is very good at feeding. The pitcher coming over to cover first. He gets the ball to him in a hurry. That way he doesn't have to look for the bag and the ball at the same time. We'll look at it again. Now watch how quickly Kingman gets the ball to him. And it gives Marshall time to look at the ball and then find the bag. So one out. And stepping up is Dane Orge. Hit a two run single in the first inning with two out. And the base is loaded. Then he walked in the third. Ball one to Orge. Brother Garth with the Toronto Blue Jays. Well hit, but foul. Mike Marshall is the only 20th century pitcher to hold league records in the same category. Pitching appearances 106 in the National League and 90 in the American League. 106 with the Dodgers in 1974. And then just a few years later with Minnesota. One and two now to Orge. Two and two. He's having a great second half, this guy, batting 330 overall for the season. Goes after it and fouls it back. Count holds. Two and two. Marshall, the third pitcher used in the ball game by the Mets. Cardinals scored two in the first, three in the third. The big shot, a three-run homer by Hendrick. Here's a high five ball, deep right field. Howard started in. Backpedals to the warning track. The ball really carrying. Two out. Howard is playing right field like he's been out there for 20 years. He just came up a week ago from Tidewater. But he really patrols the territory well. Very confident. Here's Ken Obrickfell who's 0 for 2. He flied out and popped out. Batting 286. You see the heavy lamp black on this sunny day. The shadow is really creeping up uh, out in front of home plate. One strike. That's when you know you're in the last part of the season when those shadows start to extend. That one scattered the Cardinal dugout. Got to see a few towels of surrender. White towel. They'll need one. One and two. Gets away from Marshall, slipped out of his hands. Two and two. The kinesiologist when he's not pitching. Screwball misses and it's a full count. Two out in the fifth, five to nothing Cardinals. <laughs> Ball four. Sixth walk by Met pitchers. And I think they're all on three two pitches. They have been. Switch hitter Gene Roof 0 for 1 with a walk had a very good series against the Mets at St. Louis. He made his first major league start against the Mets last weekend. I want to know. He went 3 for 8 with a double, two RBIs, and three stolen bases against the Mets. And made a very fine catch on a line shot off Kingman's bat in left field. One ball, one strike to Roof, who is the younger brother of a former major league catcher, Phil Roof, who used to catch Jim Cott 
at Minnesota caught now in the Cardinal bullpen. Two and one. Ken Obrickfeld, the runner at first with two out. Mets about hit the Cardinals, believe it or not, seven to six, but they've been outscored five nothing. Right off the end of the bat, it's a fair ball. UB Brooks throws it into right field. Oberfeld dashes into third. And Roof will hold it first as the throw comes into Flynn. That was kind of a mixed up play. Brooks on the hesitation decided to whip it to second and went <coughs> way beyond Flynn. The ball hit right off the end of the or the handle of the bat. And fielded by Brooks, and he fires offline to Doug Flynn, and the throw also late. So that leaves runners at third base. Look at Oberfeld there, and at first base. There's Larry Sorensen. He might have had a shot at Roof because Roof uh, thought the ball was going foul. It took him some time to get out of the batter's box. Sorensen 0 for 2. One ball, no strike. So it's first and third with two out. The error by Yubi Brooks, Obrickfell, and Roof, the base runners. There's a top ball. This won't be an easy play. Yubi does it. Fine running play by Yubi Brooks to retire the side. So, no runs, no hits, a walk, an error, two left, and the score in the middle of five. It's the Cardinals five, the Mets nothing. And coming up for the Mets, the top of the order, Mookie Wilson, Mike Howard, and Yubi Brooks. And now, word from Dutson. of inside nightly report on what's happening in the world of entertainment on entertainment tonight watch it weeknights at 7 30 now on nine Wookie wilson taking the first pitch outside as we go into the bottom of the fifth five nothing st louis bouncing ball good hop for hernandez and he races to the bag and beats out mookie mookie has beaten two pitchers to first base on ground balls to hernandez in this series so this time hernandez says i'll take it myself and in those previous plays uh, hernandez making outstanding plays in the field this one a little bit easier and he might have beat Sorensen over to the bag too. So Hernandez says, oh, I'll try it myself. I think I can win the race, and he does. And he just did get out of the way of that onrushing train. Mike Howard, 0 for 2, switch hitter, takes a strike. Mets having difficulty sustaining an attack. They've won two in a row with high scoring. Ball games eight to one and six to two, but right now they're being shut out five nothing. And this is one through the hole. Howard is aboard. So one out, one on. Howard with his first hit. He is now three for thirteen as a major leaguer. Well, the Mets have been scattering singles all over the place. They had three singles in the second and didn't score. Two in the third and didn't score. Two in the fourth and didn't score, and now they have one here on Howard's base hit in the fifth inning. Hard to score runs on just single. You got to get too many of them. Yubi Brooks one for two. Here's a base hit up the middle. Howard will make it into second, and the Mets have two base runners with one out. Yubi with his second hit, and once again the cheers go up for Dave Kingman. Well, the Mets have had the bases loaded in the second, first and second in the third, first and third in the fourth, and now first and second in the fifth, trying to cash in. And right here, Hubie continues his strong hitting. He now has had seven hits in the three games as you look at his base at the center field. He is seven for 11 in this series, and he has an eight game hitting streak. That's his longest. Dave Kingman flying to deep left and hit into a double play. 
Bowa. Shadow is now midway between home plate and the mound. And Kingman looking to park one right here. He hit the three run shot yesterday. Three run home run here would put them back in the ball game. They'd be trailing five to three. In the fifth inning. Popped it up. Hernandez fighting the sun. And there are two out. He got under the ball. So Howard at second. Brooks at first with two away. And we wait for Lee Mazzilli. Conference taking place on the mound. Well, Sorensen once again trying to escape trouble. Mazzilli lined a base hit to center of the second and grounded to second in the fourth. One for two. Hitting 229, five homers, 29 RBIs. Well, he's capable of putting one out as well, but most of his power comes from the other side. There's a drive to deep left center field, but Roof is there. A line drive off Basili's bat. But Gene Roof hauled it in. So that retires the side again. The Mets leave them stranded. No runs, two hits, two left, and the score after five. As Bob Murphy and Art Shamsky come in to describe the action, the Cardinals five, the Mets nothing. And coming up for St. Louis, they're top of the order with Tommy Herr, Gary Templeton, Keith Hernandez. Now here's a word from Budweiser. Hello, I'm Tom Dunn. And I'm Sarah Lee Kessler. Now we're covering more of your world with New York's only hour-long midday report. We have headline news and features. Ken Pruitt with the business report. Film and theater critic Judith Chris. Marianne Pedersen on family activity. And family medical guidance from Dr. Lendon Smith. Consumer update, shopping tips and visits to interesting restaurants. News at noon, now a full hour on Channel 9. Inning six now here at Shea Stadium. Tommy Herr up against Mike Marshall. Inside and low ball one. A beautiful Indian summer day in New York. Now he lays off Marshall behind two balls and no strikes. And our quiz is on the board. Name the top four on the Cardinals all time hit list. Line to the opposite field, base hit. Take it on one hop by Lee Mazzilli. Name the top four on the Cardinals' all-time hit list. They all had over 2,000 hits in their career with St. Louis. Everybody will say Stan Musial. Well, he has to be the number one. Let's see. Lou Brock hit over 3,000, so he's two. How about Red Shandies, who's a coach with the Cardinals? Red had a hat full. Here's Gary Templeton. Templeton, two for two and a walk. A bunt single, then a walk, and then a bloop double down the right field line. There goes the runner. He had a great jump. The throw. Oh, what a throw, but not quite in time. Garden Hire thought they might have had him. You got to give an A-plus to John Stearns for that throw. Her had a marvelous jump, and Stearns almost got him. Well, John Stearns is throwing better and better. This time, guns the ball down right on target. Tommy Hurd just had a good jump off the pitcher. Good call by second base umpire Bob Engel. He was safe. It was close. And the screwball missing. One ball and one strike. Dan Boitano is in the bullpen. Fly ball to center field, fairly deep. Back goes Mookie Wilson. Her will tag a second. Now her will go to third. Mookie throwing them in that direction. It'll be cut off. So with one away, Tommy Herr is on third. Art Shamsky, I'm sure it's probably already been done, but at least we can add our wishes for a very speedy recovery of our director, Bill Webb, down sideline with a bad cold. We'll get him back quickly. Well, I hope he's back very, very shortly. But Jeff Mitchell, I'm sure, will do the most capable job. You bet your life. Good backup. 
The infield is in the batter Hernandez and a strength call. That Cardinal bullpen led by Bruce Suter. The Mets know they can ill afford to give up a great deal more. They have given up too much already. And a strength call. Look, Hernandez up there looking for the screwball and Marshall throws him two fastballs. Well, he's taken a couple pitches with the runner on third. You never like to do that. You want to swing the bat, but he is such a good hitter. I'm sure he knows what he's doing up there. Inside low, one ball, two strikes. Well, his percentages are so much in your favor when you have the infield in. You're a left hand batter against a right hand pitcher, although the pitcher out there has a screwball, but it's always a little bit more fun to hit in that situation. And a ground ball taken by Flynn. He's throwing the ball home. Stearns has him and he's out. Out at the plate. So it paid off. The infield was in. Tommy Herr tries to score, and Doug Flynn nails him. Let's watch it. You'll enjoy it. Well, Doug makes a good play going a little bit to his left and throws home in a nice play by John Stearns on the tag. Tommy Hurt tries to get a fadeaway slide, and John stays with it and makes the put out with a nice tag. There's another angle, some great camera work. You see Tommy Hurt looking at the ball, now racing home. There's the fadeaway slide and the good tag by John Stearns. Good looking defensive play by that man, Doug Flynn. And John Stearns. Screwball outside now to George Hendry. <laughs> Doug Flynn, who won the gold glove for fielding excellence last season, might win it again this year. Well, he's made more errors this year than he did last year, but they don't always give that golden glove on errors. The gold glove is decided by your peers, it is the vote. Of the managers and the coaches. And that's why the players feel so good about that award. Hit hard to shortstop. Garden Hare stands his ground. Now to Flynn for the force out. No runs. There was a hit and a man left. After five and a half, the score St. Louis five and New York nothing. Coming up, John Stearns, Doug Flynn, and Ron Garden Hare. And now a word from manufacturers Hanover. Now join Rich Little on the show where anything can happen anywhere in the world because you asked for it. Watch it weeknights at 7. Now on 9. John Stearns will face Larry Sorensen, home half of the sixth inning. The Mets have had eight left on base in the first five innings. Strike one. Right now, it's a little bit of a difficult time for a hitter. You can see shadows right in front of the mound, then the field covered up, and then some sunlight right in front of the plate. It's always difficult to watch the ball coming out of the pitcher's hand from sunlight to shadows to sunlight back to shadow. John has two for two, a bunt single and a line drive single. He wants timeout. Sorensen with a count of two and one. That's Doug Bear loosening in the Cardinal bullpen. Fastball just missing three and one. That's getting down toward the number nine spot in the batting order. So they'll get their bullpen going. Strike call three and two. St. Louis five New York nothing such an important game for the Mets. If they win they're only two and a half out of first but if they lose they'll be four and a half back. And a broken bat ground ball foul down the third base line. Boy, if is such an important word in sports, 
Uh, if the Mets maybe would have snuck a victory in last weekend in St. Louis, there you see Jesse Roscoe warming up in the Mets bullpen. But the Mets could have maybe stole a game last weekend in St. Louis. All the difference in the world in this series. And it's fought off and fouled away by John Stearns and stays three and two. Two weeks to go in the baseball season. Reach the point now where you can say every game is a big game. And it is until you're eliminated. Fouled off again. St. Louis will go to Wrigley Field to play two. Mets are home here at Shea tomorrow night playing Pittsburgh. Greg Harris will start against Louis Tion. And the Tuesday game with the Pirates is a 5.05 p.m. game. Ground ball down to first. Hernandez a nifty pickup. And now Sorensen covering. Hernandez a nifty glove man around first. Oh, he can pick it at first base. That's for sure. We're going to see this last play. First baseman have made some good plays in this ball game. Dave Kingman. Now Keith Hernandez on the run. Complete turnaround. Circle and then a flip over the pitcher covering the bag. Doug Flynn is 0 for 2 but has hit the ball very hard both times up. And there's a shot for a base hit down the left field line. Then will be rounding first and going for two. The throw to second. And he's safe. Going in headlong, Doug Flynn arrives in time and has a two base hit down the line. Well, the third baseman, Ken Oberfeld, was way off the bag. He didn't think they, uh, Doug would be pulling the ball. Doug pulled it down the third base line, and there you see the left fielder, Gene Roof, picking up, and there's the head first slide. First two times up in the game, Doug had hit the ball to right field. They were not expecting him to pull it down the line that way. 